So Christian, why do some people heal and others don't despite using the same treatments, whether alternative or conventional? Well, who am I to answer such an important question? I have an opinion about this, and so have many people as well. I will use a metaphor. When two people meet, we are at a point in space and time. You are there, in that seat, and I'm here, in this seat, right at this moment. And we are like two points here. And behind this point, there's like a volume, a pyramid. The point is just the tip of the pyramid. And the pyramid behind is the unconscious. The first part of the pyramid is my personal unconscious. Right behind is my parental unconscious, essentially from the mother and the father through the project purpose of Marc Frechet. Then comes the family unconscious, then the collective unconscious of a region, a country, a period, as well as all the programs accumulated inside our unconscious. Therapy is proposed to lift the veil on this unconscious, to explore this pyramid. Each therapy has its own techniques and beliefs that touch some parts of this unconscious. But let's remain humble. In my opinion, I believe that the human being is and will remain a mystery, and it will always remain greater than a theory, a thought, a concept, a belief, or a set of beliefs. And this is good. This is good that man is not limited to this. Imagine that we can understand love, that we can define it chemically, psychologically. How would things be? How would the world evolve? It would be a great sadness or, in any case, a disappointment. The love we have for our child, our partner, or anyone else is not an equation. It's not an equation and it can't be reduced to that. It simply is, but we want to talk about it in a way that is limiting, regardless if it's a mathematical equation, a language, a poem, a psychological or psychoanalytical or biodecoding theory. So let's remain humble facing the mysteries of the living, of the human being, of disease or health. So it's obvious that a person will heal with some treatments like homeopathy, acupuncture, allopathy, while another person with the same symptom and the same treatment will not. This is what piqued my interest right from start with biodecoding. For me, this question is fundamental. It's a priority in my research and in my listening to the client. In neuro-linguistic programming, we have a beautiful saying, which is, what is the difference that makes the difference? So what makes the precise difference between two individuals with the same symptom, the same treatment or therapy react differently? This is this curiosity that makes that biodecoding of today is different from six months ago, a year ago, ten years ago. Today, I talk about the concept of the impact and the eraser, which was not the case a few years ago. Actually, this concept is the topic of my new book, which just got released in French and is in the process of translation in Spanish and hopefully soon in English. This concept is about 15 years old. Now, for the past 10 years, I have been talking about the biological predicates and the biological portal which have evolved for the past five or six years. 
Now, all my students in biodecoding study the biological portal, and I'm the only one who teaches this concept, this way of organizing the information. And this is what will allow us to find what makes the difference between two patients who have the same symptom and evolve differently. Can you explain what is the biological portal for people to understand what we're Alors, talking about? The idea behind the biological portal is, well, we know what is a portal. It's like a door with a frame. On this frame, we'll write all the tangible clinical objective information. Some people come for a cancer on the outer superior quarter of the left breast, which affects the milk ducts. So we write all this information, the ducts, the left breast, right-handed woman, the outer superior quarter, the tumor is 3 by 5 centimeters. Another woman will also have breast cancer on the left side, but she is left-handed and it's not the ducts that are affected, but the connective tissues. And it may be the inferior part of the breast, so we notice already that two diseases have objective, tangible and clinical differences. Even two diabetic people will have slightly different symptoms. The numbers, for instance, or one person will have circulatory issues and not the other one, or one will have kidney issues and not the other one. The same applies with flu or an infection. It may give headaches for one person, joint pain for the other, or vomiting for another one, all with the same diagnosis. So on this portal, we'll put all the clinical signs and we realize that each person is different in many ways. Also, we'll listen to what I call the locking conflicts, which is another concept that I have developed for many years, which enables to understand the difference between two people. The locking conflicts are all the restrictions related to growing or healing. It also includes inversions like it's good to be bad or it's bad to be good, as well as secondary benefits of the disease and the need to control. So we write on the portal all those locking elements that we can perceive during the session. So we have this clinical and objective information here which will translate into a biological code on the other side of the portal. For instance, the left breast is the mother-child relationship for the right-handed woman. The milk ducts are a separation conflict. Inflammation means that there's anger. Cancer means that I wish for something to last forever. The numbers related to the size of the tumor have sometimes a connection with the date of the Bioshock or of an important age. The upper part is related to the children, the outer part is related to someone external, while the inner part is related to my inner child. I'm going fast here to come to say that all this information will be decoded and all those codes will lead to the keyhole of the door, which is the story. In other words, during the seminars that I teach around the world, I do demonstrations on people that I don't know. A man comes for a hearing loss in the left ear. I don't know this man and I hardly understand his language. I put the information on the portal, left ear, right-handed man and hearing loss. The left ear is what gets out of me and the hypothesis is that I don't want the other to hear something. The right ear is what enters me, so I don't want to hear something. That's for the right-handers. And this man experiences his conflict at 54 years old. And in the biological codes, there are also cycles. So I ask him what happened at half of his age. And here, at 27 years old, he gets married and says something to the in-laws that he regrets. He said to himself, I shouldn't have said that, because it has upset people and it has created drama. I shouldn't have said that, I regret it. So I don't know this man. He provides me information about his symptom, which is earring loss on the left ear. I make an hypothesis about the code. I want someone to not hear 
or to be deaf to what I said. It's a hypothesis for work, and we reached the keyhole, an event that he experienced at half of his age. In the memorized biological cycles revealed by Marc Frechet. Immediately he started experiencing sensation in his left ear. He heard noises in his ear. He felt like something was moving inside during the session. Well, you were here with me, so you know what happened. So that's the usefulness of the biological portal. In other words, the biological portal represents the person's story through the symptom, the symptom telling us the story of the person. That's exactly it. It's an excellent way of putting it. In the symptom is the expression of the person's story. Then the person's story is in the biological, emotional and conflictual code. And at the end we find the story. Actually, he finds the story. Do you remember, he started the session saying that he had already worked on it. He had already done therapies, but he couldn't figure it out. Here, the biological portal enabled him to find the code within himself. 